Hey guys, Dan Ward here at Ochoco Bushcraft. Well, I know it's been a while since I've done a video. In fact, it's probably been at least a month or more. Uh, the weather changed and it got real dry again. So I actually hadn't come back up to high camp, which is where I'm at now for, well, this is the first time in a month, I think that I've been back up here. And uh, also, you know, I love bushcraft. I love survival. I love being out in the woods here. It's a uh, it's a big part of my life. It's something that I really enjoy, <clears throat> but it is not the number one thing in my life. Um, I am a devout Christian, and the number one thing in my life is serving God. So I've actually been really busy working on my second YouTube channel. If anybody's interested, it is called Preserved Word Ministries. Preserved Word Ministries. That is my ministry channel. So for the past month, I've been working really hard on that and getting uh, a lot of videos made, getting one of my books um, typed up so that I could sell it. And uh, that's just where I've been. But anyway, I'm back out here. I'm up at high camp. My shelter is actually back over here. And uh, so is my fire pit. Um, it's been raining for several days straight out here. Right now there's a little break in the rain, so I'm doing this video. Um, the lighting is really poor over where my fire pit is, which you guys have seen in previous videos. So I'm actually building a fire out here on this piece of bark, and I'm gonna move that over to my fire pit once I get it going. But what I wanted to teach you guys today is how to make a fire using a single piece of wood. Now, if you're wearing cargo pants or BDUs or anything like that, you've got the nice side pocket, keep a piece of fat wood, a nice piece of dry, pitchy fat wood in your pocket at all times. That and some windproof, waterproof matches like these, these from Yuko, the uh, 15 second burn time. You can actually dip these in a glass of water after it's lit, pull it back out and the flame will still be burning. The water won't put it out. These two things right here, and you can get a fire going every time, you know, and I do, you know, I carry a ferro rod, I have it right here, uh, I carry tinder in a pouch, I have cotton balls with Vaseline for emergency and whatnot, but I want to show you with just these two items, you can get a fire going each and every time you're out here. And of course, before you start, you are going to want to gather up some more wood uh, right behind me is a fir tree that is very, very dense. It's got one of those dense canopies, almost like an umbrella that comes down. And so underneath that umbrella where there hasn't been um, any sunlight and not a lot of rain getting through is some really dry, dry wood. So I've got a big pile of that sitting over here. And uh, I've shown you on a previous video, there's a big root wad, um, from a fallen tree behind me and I've got a couple sawn off chunks of that and although they're wet on the outside from all the rain it's still dry on the inside and that thing is full of pitch so once I get my fire going uh, this is really really gonna burn but with that being said you've got your one piece of fat wood so you need something to set it on you know a fallen log a stump whatever you've got because you're gonna baton this down to some little bitty pieces so that's what I'm going to do now, using my knife. And I've got a big club that I had picked up sitting over here, a baton actually, not really a club, but it uh, looks like a club. It's a baton that I made up here at uh, high camp, so anytime that I want to uh, split some firewood or if I'm making something, I've got a good hard piece of wood. So I'm going to start here just by taking this one piece of fat wood and making it into several smaller pieces of wood. And I want to keep it off the ground, keep it from soaking up any moisture. So that's I've got this uh, piece of bark. And that's the other thing I want to mention. When you're building a fire out here in this kind of weather, don't try to build your fire right on the wet ground or uh, 
on top of snow or something. Try to find, you know, pull a piece of bark off of a tree, even a rock if you turn it over and the other side's dry. Start your fire on something that's dry so that the wood doesn't start wicking the moisture up into it. So I'm going to break these in half because I want to get quite a few pieces of them made. But um, as I said, this one single piece of fat wood and start batoning that down into some little tiny pieces. Now because this is fat wood and it's completely loaded with pitch, I actually don't need any tinder to get it going. You know, you've seen me many times when I'm doing fires. I've always got tinder. I've got dryer lint. I've got uh, old man's beard. I've got crumbled up um, bark and dried grasses. But the nice thing about a piece of nice dry fat wood that's loaded with pitch is if you get your pieces down small enough, it will ignite from just a single match. And I'm going to keep taking these down to where I've got some really fine slivers. There, that's a nice one right there. Another one. Little tiny slivers. I'm gonna pop that one and get one more out of this. Okay. Uh, one more. Just for good measure. All right. Now, when you're doing this type of a fire, what you want to do is basically make a little log cabin. So I'm going to put this out here where you guys can see what I'm doing, I hope. And I'm just going to uh, put them out here like this and then start going crossways. And just build me up a little cabin. And everything is getting narrower as I go. Put that on. I've got some of these little fine slivers. I'm going to put them up on top here. Okay. This little cabin that I just made is going to ignite with a single match because of all the pitch in the wood and the wood's dry. And it's also going to get me a nice fire going. Hopefully I'll be able to transfer it over to my fire pit before it burns through this bark, but uh, I think we will. So single match, windproof, waterproof, 15 second burn time. And I'm holding it down underneath the pitch and like I said those little slivers of pitch they're dry and pitch just burns amazingly well so I now have the pitch going the pitch is actually sitting there bubbling and that's like I said that is the advantage of fat wood you should always have a piece with you have a piece in your backpack in your pocket on your belt or all three I actually have Two pieces on my belt I had the one in my pocket but with just a single piece of fat wood and a match you can get you a fire going you know you can you don't need to stop and gather up tinder I mean I still advise carrying cotton balls saturated with Vaseline with you because you never know but on top of that I'm not gonna do a whole bunch till I get my fire moved over into my pit but once that uh, pitch wood starts getting to uh, where it's burning real good, and you can start taking these little branches, and they're a little damp, but this pitch wood is going to be burning so good 
that it's going to keep going and it's going to get those burning too. And then I can just keep adding to it. And I got some bigger stuff here. You can hear it snapping, even though it's a little damp on the outside. It's still pretty dry on the inside. Okay, so that is how to get a fire going with uh, just a single piece of wood. And what I'm going to do, hopefully, without having a crash and burn situation, literally, is I'm going to take and this piece of bark and I'm going to move my fire around into the fire put pit and then I will uh, take you guys and show you my fire in there and uh, give you another look at my shelter and like I said I haven't been out here in a month no animals have got in there thankfully um, it has leaked a little bit part of it's dry part of it's damp but you know I can uh, throw some more boughs on the roof and some more boughs inside and once we start getting some snow accumulated it's going to be really, really cozy in there because that snow is just going to build up on the roof and insulate. So bear with me just a second, guys, while I go ahead and try to move my fire over here into my fire pit. Okay, that actually worked quite well. And uh, I'm going to throw some of these dried twigs that I had piled up here on top. And then I'll grab you guys and get you around there. Okay. So, back up here at high camp. You guys remember I built a table out here. I actually got my pack sitting out on the table. I uh, carved me a spot in this log, built this table so I had a place to sit and eat dinner. And then I got my shelter sitting back here. My firewood stayed nice and dry. I could have used it if I needed to. All my firewood still stacked up back inside. I may use a little of it today. My uh, roof has held together real well. Like I said, just a few little leaks, but uh, it's held together quite well. So anyway, I got my fire moved around in here. And as soon as I uh, stop recording, I'll uh, get a bunch more wood on there and get me a nice fire going. I'm going to stay out here for the day. I've got uh, some cocoa and some other goodies with me, and I'm going to have a nice lunch. But uh, That's it, guys. Just how to build a fire using a single uh, single piece of fatwood. Just, you know, when, when you find it, pack it home with you. You know, stuff your pockets, your pack, whatever. Take it home, and then keep a piece in your pack, a piece in your pocket. Always have it with you. And with that one single piece of fatwood, even in the, these wet, wet conditions like I'm in where it's been raining for days and days, you'll be able to get a fire going. Thanks for watching Ochoco Bushcraft. And uh, again, if anyone's interested, Preserved Word Ministries is my new channel. And I'd appreciate you guys checking that out. Take care.